In this video, I'm gonna show you the best overclocks for mining Kapow on every 30 series GPU. In case you haven't seen it before, this is my test rig. It has one of every 30 series card and a couple RTX workstation cards, and it's been putting in the work mining Kapow over the last several weeks as I benchmark this algorithm. So let's not waste any time. Here's the results I was able to achieve with each GPU in this rig. I chase efficiency in mining this algorithm is a very warm algorithm. It really taxes the GPU more on that later. And you can see each interval card I have in this rig, mega hash power, the efficiency, which was my measurement here when I was overclocking. And then I wound up using the strategy of a lock core clock and a memory offset. I've seen others use core offsets with power limits, kind of like an old school way to overclock your GPUs. But for me, it didn't seem better in any way than just locking the core because each GPU's got a different silicon lottery. So if I can lock the core, it'll just pull as much power as it needs to achieve that core lock versus restricting it with a power limit and then setting a core offset anyway. I don't know. If you think differently, let me know down in the comment section below. But for me, in all my testing, my specific GPUs, this is the way to go. So. Your GPUs will be different than mine. Silicon lottery is a thing. The manufacturers of the GPUs, the cooling setup, those are all variables in all of this. So it's really best for you to start here and then tune your specific GPU. So in the rest of this video, we're gonna talk about how to benchmark your GPU following the methods that I think are the best. We're gonna talk about the best mining software to use, the ones I recommend. And then at the end, we're gonna review why I think ProgPow and it, all its variants, Kapow and FiroPow, are actually really great algorithms that get a bad rap. So stay tuned at the end of the video for that. Let's jump over to HiveOS so you can see all these results in real time. Here's that rig. You can see those temperatures are running really, really warm. I had an industrial fan pointed at this. So know that if you could be mining uh, any of the ProgPow based algorithms, they're gonna run very warm because of how they tax and use the GPU. None of these are throttling at this point, but some are definitely getting very close. Fan speed is gonna be your friend. External fans are gonna be your friends. Uh, but you can see some of the non-GDDR6X cards like the 3060, 3060 Ti, and 3070 actually run pretty okay temperature-wise. So I really enjoy those in mining this algorithm. Couple other things to note before we move on to benchmarking. The workstation cards, the A2000 and then the A4000 are just kind of like a beast of their own that take a whole different approach to overclocking yet give some really nice efficiency. Additionally, there's two GPUs I wanna call out on here. The first one is gonna be this 3080, which is actually the 12 gigabyte variant. I think this thing still has an LHR lock on it. I know it was like a version three LHR along with the 3050 that got released at the tail end of the 30 series. And what has happened here is as I push the memory, the core cannot stay at where I locked it. It will reduce and reduce and reduce the higher the memory overclock goes, thus reducing my hash rate quite a bit, which is exactly what it would do was when mining Ethereum. So I think that still has something going on here because it acts wildly different than any other 30 series GPU. The other one I'll call out, just in case you have it, is the 3080 Ti. This is a 3080 Ti EVGA for the one three. What's interesting about it, and I have three or four others I've tested for the one threes, the power reading in the software is wrong. It pulls anywhere from 30, 40, on some of them up to 70 more watts than is reported. This specific GPU is pulling around 20 to 30 more watts when measured at the PCIe meter than what's reported here in the software. The Gigabyte Vision 3080 Ti I have is way more accurate, and I've never had an NVIDIA GPU be this inaccurate when reading in the software versus over the PCIe meter. So I don't know what's going on there. If you do, please let me know down in the comment section below. Otherwise, this is a really great place to start for you and that gets us to benchmarking your GPUs. Now, for this, I use a different mining software than I wound up using in the end. What I wound up doing was using WildRig as the mining software for benchmarking. It has a really nice benchmarking feature to it that can refresh really fast so you can see real-time results. Here's what's really important about benchmarking any ProgPile-based algorithm. And I'm gonna let Team Red Miner, which I know is an AMD miner, speak for me here because I learned this in benchmarking my AMD GPUs. 
The ProgPow algorithm contains random elements that change frequently with new network block heights. The compute load on the GPU will therefore vary accordingly. The hash rate difference between lean and mean blocks with easy versus heavy random math operations can vary as much as plus or minus 10% depending on your core clock. Therefore, tuning for the algo without locking down your test to a specific block height means you'll get random results over time. What does that mean? What that means is that if you're benchmarking and not locking to a specific block height, you're not gonna know if the changes you're making to the core or the memory or the power limits are actually helping you or hurting you, especially if you're chasing efficiency because the GPU might be getting different work, which demands more of the core, which increases or decreases the core um, performance in the miner, which is then gonna change your hash rate up or down. So you're really not gonna know if it's because it's on a different block height or it's because of the overclocking that you're doing. So what you can do and what these miners have as a feature for benchmarking is lock it at one block height so you know that the hash rate changes that you're seeing are only because of the overclock changes that you're making. In my flight sheet for Wild Rig Multi, you can see the extra configuration arguments that I have here. I have dash dash benchmark, and I have the benchmark block set to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is the average block height that Team Redminer recommends benchmarking GPUs to. I also have it set to print time five, which means the miner will refresh every five seconds to give me new results. Let's apply those changes and check out how it works. Wild Rig's up in mining right now, and you can see there's no accepted or rejected shares. I'm not submitting anything to the pool. This is just for testing purposes only. And the card that I'm looking at is that 3060 Ti. And what I see here is I have the hash rate it's doing, the power, it gives me even efficiency score right in the miner itself. But what I really love is it shows me the core clock and then the memory clock as it's running right now. So I can quickly see how fast it takes for the settings I set in HiveOS to reflect in the miner to then reflect in the hash rate. So let's do a test of that 3060 Ti currently locked at 1350 on the core. I have to go plus or minus increments of 15. It has to be divisible by 15 for a core. So I'm gonna take this up to 1410. I'm gonna set that in Hive and you're gonna see how fast it's set in the miner so that I know I can start looking for some uh, changes in the hash rate to know if it's gonna be even better or worse. And I'm sitting around a 0.2 efficiency score right now. You can see that quickly changed to 1410 and the hash rate is changing as well. The GPU is pulling what looks like probably more power at this point or the hash rate has calmed down because my efficiency score has dropped from around that point to down to 1.93. And this is incredibly useful because like I said, the mining algorithm changes as the block heights go. So you're never really sure if you're doing better or worse because that's changing as you're making changes. So Wild Rig and its benchmarking feature absolutely comes in handy for testing this algorithm, though it's not the mining software that I ended up with mining on Kapow. Once you benchmark your GPU using Wild Rig, then it's time to move on to some really great mining software. And on the screen, you see T-Rex Miner. It's a tried and true miner, and it absolutely performs just great on any of the ProgPow based algorithms. And you can see it on display right here. And this is what I was able to get the best performance on is using T-Rex Miner, though there's some other mining software that's really close, if not almost competitive, arguably could be the same as T-Rex Miner. And I'm gonna show you one that I really love right now. I have no idea how to pronounce this mining software's name, but I'm gonna call it Regal because its GUI is kingly. Look at this. Look at this user interface here. This is like the best I've ever seen in any mining software. It's got your averages for all your GPUs up top, all the information I think you could ever want on how a graphics card is doing right there in the miner, plus it still has the log for mining right down below. I just, it, it really can't be beat. And uh, the performance on it has been exceptional. It pretty much is on par with T-Rex miner, maybe a little under, but on average over time, they both seem to be doing just about the same so I might stick to this one. I gotta look at what the rates are for their uh, dev fees, maybe to make a final decision. I haven't looked at that yet, but what a fantastic piece of mining software. So the three that I really think are the best from all of the testing I have done is gonna be Regal, T-Rex, and G-Miner. T-Rex seems to give just a little bit boost of performance and efficiency, 
but the other two are either on equal ground or maybe just a little below. Any of the other miners that I've tested that have prog pow or kapow or fero pow, they all, with these overclocks, I seem to get a lot of rejected shares right away. The uh, performance just isn't on par at all. So these are the three that I've come down to as thinking are amongst the best. So whatever one you wanna use is up to you. That brings us to the last topic for this video, and that is just ProgPow and how I think it's a wonderful algorithm that we should be very thankful for. I get that it runs very warm. I get that your GPUs are gonna be testing their thermal limits, and as a residential miner, that isn't any fun. But it is solving a problem that I think, especially if you're a newer miner, you've experienced, and it's fending off ASICs. Let's take a look at the original EIP on the Ethereum network for the introduction of pragmatic proof of work. So right here it says it's an algorithm designed to close the efficiency gap available to specialized ASICs. It utilizes almost all parts of commodity hardware, such in this case as the GPU, all parts. It saturates this GPU, which is why it needs power to send to all those components for this algorithm. Here's what's happened in the past and what this algorithm looks to achieve and why I think it's popular among a lot of newer cryptocurrencies in the last year or so. In the before times, what would happen is an algorithm would come out, it'd be mineable by maybe CPUs at first and then heavily GPUs during my entry into GPU mining. And let's take SHA-256 Bitcoin's algorithm as an example. The ASIC efficiency gain is around a thousand times versus using either a CPU or a GPU. Script, Litecoin's algorithm, a thousand times. X16R, Ravencoin's original algorithm, a thousand times more efficient on an ASIC. Equihash, the list goes on. And then you got to Adhash, Ethereum's algorithm used by ETC and a couple other coins now. And the efficiency gain got smaller only two times over a GPU because of the DAG and needing a large size of external memory, but still a double efficiency. And so that's where ProgPow came in to try to solve that. And what they claim, and I think has been pretty much proven true at this point, is that the minimal efficiency gain would be around 1.1 to 1.2% over a GPU. And that is absolutely wonderful. And they built ProgPow to be programmable for other cryptocurrencies to tweak. There's levers you can pull for all these different parameters. And that's what Ravencoin originally with Kapow has done. And then later Fira with FiroPow. And there's a, no, there's a couple other coins out there who have used different variations or have used the original ProgPow. So in the end, it's a great algorithm because lately I'm sure if you've been in GPU mining even for a short time, you've experienced Caspa. You can mine with your GPUs and do really well. And then FPGAs took over and then ASICs took over. And that's pretty much what happens if you don't have an algorithm that can fend off ASICs. And in order to do that, you need an algorithm that's gonna saturate, in this case, the GPU is what ProgPow, pragmatic proof of work, has determined. So I know it gets a bad rap because it runs more really warm and you need some extra cooling and GDR6X GPUs don't really love it. But in the end, it's keeping GPU mining around one way or another. So I give it all my respect. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helpful to you. Get benchmarking on Kapow. Something tells me this might be the algorithm going forward. Take care of yourself and each other. See you in the next video.